In today's video, I'm going to show you five of my favorite features in Lychee Slicer. And if you watched for the entire thing, I've thrown in a few bonuses as well. A lot of the features that I enjoy working with apply to both minis or larger objects but some of them I would say are a little bit more useful for some larger objects. And for that, I went over to the Lychee library and I'm grabbing this Brutar Cyclops, which is more like a Cowclops um, by Crippled God Foundry. So I downloaded this guy onto the build plate. Now, normally this does come pre-supported in the Lychee library, so you can just download it and be on your way. But of course I deleted all that for the sake of this video. Now, the first feature I wanna show you is called projection supports, specifically projection supports with grid supports turned on. Let me show you how to do that. First, let's find the right model for that. And the right model for projection support is anything with a flat, uh, really large flat surface like this base right here. So I'm gonna do right here is I'm just gonna click on this guy, hit V to hide it, V to hide that one as well. Make sure that the base is selected. Go to prepare. Make sure under structure that grid snap to grid is turned on. I'm gonna leave the interval at five, but if you don't know what this does, this basically just changes uh, how far apart the supports will be on the grid. As you can see, if I make this really, really small, this yellow pattern gets really, really tight. As I make it big, you know, it gets big. So I'm gonna leave it at five millimeters. I'm gonna go over to manual, click on start projection supports. I'm gonna select the surface that is going to have supports projected from it. Um, this little green arrow right here, this is actually the direction the supports are gonna project from. The supports don't project from the build plate up, they project from the highlighted surface down towards the build plate. I'm gonna click on preview support and the settings I like to use is on the border I use 1.8. I'm gonna use my heavy pre-support for something of this size. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of Z, Z influence. If you don't know what that does, as I move it up, um, you'll see here towards the top there's less supports. If I move it down, it's gonna do 1.8 1 all the way around. So I just turn up a little bit so there's a few less supports from the bottom as from the top. On the infill, I'm gonna do 4.0. And again, a little bit of Z influence so it's a little bit higher density on the bottom than it is on the top. Click on add supports. And that's pretty much it. This is now supported. I can go through and add the bracings after that structure. I'm just gonna add the default bracings, click on add update, and we're good to go. Now this is where I'm gonna show you one of my more favorite shortcuts. If I go over here and click on bottom, I can click O on my keyboard, and that's gonna change the view from orthographic to um, a normal view. And so what that does is it just kind of changes it so I'm looking at this model from a two-dimensional plane or from a three-dimensional plane. And for me, right, what I'm gonna do right here, the two-dimensional plane, I find a little bit easier. I'm just going to select these supports right here, right-click and choose Make Support Vertical. And right there, I've got my base all ready to go with just a few clicks. And that making projection support with grid supports my first favorite feature in Lychee Slicer. For my second most favorite feature, this is called Inline Supports. Where to find this is under Prepare, manual, and then inline supports, and make sure use shift key is select to on. Now for me, I like to use 1.8 for around the perimeter and about 3.8 for infill. It's kind of like the grid supports. The way this works is whatever I place a support, that support is automatically selected. Now if I hold down my shift key, wherever I bring that to, it's automatically going to create a path between what's selected and where I'm gonna place it. And those support tips are gonna be every 1.8 millimeters. What I can do here is I can hold down shift and I can just kind of go around this surface right here or um, go around this base right here and just click and click and wherever it's going to place it next, it's going to place a support kind of in between. For something like this, small inline supports works pretty well at getting a pretty good cadence pretty quickly. It's not perfect uh, for a circle this small, a larger circle, it's a little easier or obviously shapes that are square. But that makes inline support my second most favorite feature in Lychee Slicer. For my third most favorite feature in Lychee Slicer, I need to first run an island search. And then once that's done, there's this cool new feature called area filtering. Now I just did a video on that one just earlier, but in this shorter video where everything is compact, I wanted to mention again because it really is one of my top favorite. And what this does is right here, I can basically filter the islands down from larger to smaller. So I have in here, I'm showing all the islands that were found, 214. But let's say I only wanted to use my heavy supports and support the larger one. I'm gonna set any island that is uh, smaller than one millimeter don't show me, and that's zero. So let's do 0.5. Well, now I've got four. I've got four islands that are 0.5. Here I can create a heavy support and just quickly go through and support the larger islands. And that being one of my, my third most favorite feature in Lychee Slicer, being the area filtering. Now for my fourth most favorite feature, this has to be 3D hollowing. 3D hollowing not only makes 3D printing much easier, but it also saves you a ton of money. In fact, I don't think there's a, another feature 
anywhere that'll save you more money in 3D printing than 3D hollowing. The reason for this is because resin is by far the most expensive thing. If you buy your printer, that's a one-time cost, but resin, you know, just continues to add up. And the more money you can save in resin, the more money you save in 3D printing. To find that, it's under prepare, hollow, 3D hollow, and with the object selected, you get to pick the thickness, the wall thickness, and the quality. From here, just click on add update. Now, once the model has been 3D hollowed, there's a really cool button that becomes available, and that's over here called the interior exterior button. When you click on this, you'll see an interior view. Now, remember, this, this button is only available once 3D hollowing has been applied. Now, from here, you can see it's kind of a little bit messy because of all the islands that have not been supported on the outside. There's another cool thing that's a part of 3D hollowing, and that's this clipping right here. If I move this up, it'll actually clip off the bottom if I make sure that this is toggled to say up, which what this means right here is it means is everything above the clipping line will be will show and everything below it will be clipped off. If I click on it again, you'll see it toggles between the two. And there you have it, my fourth favorite feature, 3D hollowing within Lychee Slicer. For this bonus feature, I'm gonna show you how to add holes for magnets using hollowing holes in a way that they weren't necessarily intentionally designed to be worked with, but that works great. To show you that, I'm gonna go back to this Minotaur right here. Now, we're gonna pretend that on this Minotaur, the top has different variants, so we don't want to permanently glue it, we're gonna to want to magnetize it to the base. So for that, I can come over here and I can just grab a couple of hollowing holes. For that, you're gonna to go to prepare, hollow, and then holes. Now for here, we're gonna set the diameter and the penetration to be about what my magnet's going to be. For these ones, I have a four by two, so we're gonna say the diameter is four millimeters, and we're gonna go up just by a little bit bigger. We're gonna say 4.1, uh, and then for two, we're also gonna make it just a little bit deeper than it should be, so we're gonna probably 2.2. .2. So now I've got my set uh, magnet hole here, and I just have to go through and place where I want them to go. If I want to, I can even overtake these um, little bumps right here. Now, because I made them a little bit deeper than they need to be, I can make them poke out a little bit, but they're still gonna be deep enough where the magnet can fully rest inside of here. Now, as far as the other side's concerned, I'm gonna have to do the same down here as well, since these bumps are now gonna be in the way of the magnet. So for this one, I'm gonna want to go through and actually rotate this around by 180 degrees, and I'll show you why in just a second. And I can make sure that this magnet um, goes just enough right through there. Now, what I know is that the penetration depth of the magnet is gonna be how thick the magnet really is in real life, and then this right here is extra. So the, from here, I can just make it larger, and now it's going to fully remove that part. Now, what I don't wanna do is I don't want the model, the magnet to go all the way inside the model. The point of this being isn't to create a hole where the magnet's just gonna push all the way through. This is a place I can push the magnet and it has something back to stop it. So I do, I do need to make sure that I do one other thing with this one, and that is I can either make the walls thicker or I can go over here and I can put a blocker around that magnet right there. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm actually gonna add a blocker. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so it's just a little bit bigger than the magnet. That way there's some material for the magnet to kind of uh, rest inside. We're going to duplicate that blocker, move it to the other side. Now when I click update, you're gonna see that the um, around the magnet there's some extra material. And if you still want to hollow this out, you can still add some holes on the other side of it just for hollowing. That way there's still a spot for the resin to get through. But where these two um, blocks are, there's going to be a nice hole right for a magnet. And there you have my bonus favorite feature in Lychee Slicer, using hollowing holes to create magnet holes. And there you have it. Those are my top favorite features in Lychee Slicer. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. And if you could, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us out a lot. If you have any more questions or if you have any more suggestions for other movies, you can leave those in the comments below or join us on our Lychee Slicer Discord. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.